A long time ago, the UK was a magical wilderness. Wildlife flourished in ways we have never known. But gradually, we have lost this paradise and pushed nature out. So can we restore some of this world? Today we take a journey to one of Britain's unique environments, the Somerset Levels. Here there is a plan to step back and watch the UK's own giant wetland flourish. And it all begins in a few small fields near the tiny village of Godney. At one time, the UK was mostly covered by woodland and our river valleys were giant wetlands teeming with life. Now, unfortunately, over time, a lot of these wildlands have been lost. And actually, at one point, we had forest cover of just 5%. Now, that's led to the UK being one of the most nature-depleted countries in the world and has meant really bad things for our biodiversity. And consequently, we've forgotten what it means to live alongside nature. things are gradually improving. People are starting to realise that we need nature in our lives. One key idea is rewilding, which is an increasingly discussed topic. So I'm here to find out a little bit more about it and to see a project which is in the early phases of this intriguing process. I'm visiting a very special place in Somerset in the southwest of England. It lies on the Somerset levels, 160,000 acres of coastal plain close to the small village of Godney. I've heard that the levels were once a wildlife-packed wetland teeming with life, a bit like England's Okavango Delta, so I had to come and see it for myself. The person I heard it from is Alistair Cameron, an environmentalist based here in the southwest, who is on a mission to start rewilding this land. Alistair, hi. Hi, great to see you. Yeah, good to see you. So I've been looking a little bit at the fields around here and they all seem really, really flat. Can you tell me what makes this area particularly special? Yeah, I mean, we're here in the Somerset Levels in the southwest of England and this was once a huge kind of wild wetland. It's a very low-lying, flat area of the country and it would have teemed with life, much of which is now gone. And right now it's an area of mixed farmland, wetland and a few nature reserves. Um, it's pretty good for wildlife now, but it could be so much better. And what we're doing is trying to really just buy small pieces of land. We've got two sites, one further south from here that's a bit wetter, and this one, and try and create a bit more space for nature and a bit more space for wildlife to do its own thing through rewilding. So is there anything specifically that you're doing out on these sites? Are you planting trees or bushes maybe? Yeah, I mean, one of the ironies, of course, of rewilding is that you're actually trying to do as little as possible. Standard conservation is, has always worked around the model of trying to conserve a specific animal or a specific plant or habitat, particularly in the UK. And rewilding is almost turning that in its head. It's taking something that isn't wild and allowing it to become much wilder. So we're just trying to step back and allow space for nature to have free reign, to do its own thing. So can you already start to see a difference emerging between, say, this field and some of the neighbouring fields in the area? Yeah, I think there are. I mean, you know, it could be that the molehills that are allowed to grow taller every year or that when a tree or a bush falls over, it's allowed to kind of lie there. And it's through these kind of subtle changes that wildness starts to creep back into a landscape. If you like, I can try and find some for you and have a look. OK, cool. Let's have a look. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's one just over here. It's, it's not a spectacular change, but it's an important one for this, this part of the land. You know, we talk a lot about tree planting and we won't be doing a lot of that here. But what we do have, of course, is natural regeneration of forest. Here we've got lots of birch saplings that are expanding out of the hedgerow. 
each year we get a few more. Basically, these trees here could move out and create a forest and a bit more habitat for wildlife in 50 years or so. Yeah, exactly. It'll take a long time. And in between that, we'll also probably see a lot more sort of scrub coming up mixed in with the wetland habitat and the meadow habitat. And that's fantastic and that's okay because what we're trying to do is not create any one set outcome, but just create space for those processes to happen. So this field is about four years in. What do we expect from the future with this? I mean, how wild is it going to look? Yeah, I mean, I guess in terms of this specific field, as we've already said, there's going to be, you know, more scrub, expansion of forest, probably more wetland plants coming out of the ditches and into the grass. More generally, though, uh, what we're really trying to do is create a wilder level. So this isn't just about one field or one tiny patch. This is about the whole area having a wilder character. So we hope this is just the start of a much larger project. In terms of animals, you know, there's animals that are nearby already, like wild boar and beavers they'll probably expand to the region quite soon. And the more kind of spaces left aside for nature there are, the better a chance they have of survival. We may also see other species that have been gone for a long time coming back, as well as species that aren't even in the UK. As our climate changes, we need more of these kind of places, you know, where animals can adapt and when, when things that we don't expect can happen. I think it'd be great if you went and spoke to Pete. He's one of our ecological advisors and he's over at the other site right now. And I think you can go and catch up with him. Alistair made a really good point about rewilding, and that's that it's about letting go and not taking control or forcing anything to happen. So now I'm at the second field where I'm going to meet the ecologist behind the project, Pete, and hopefully he can tell me a little bit more about what's going on here. Hi there, is it Pete? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I've just been down at the other field with Alistair. Is this the southern field? It is indeed. Go check it out. Great, let's have a look. So Pete, what's your role on this project and how do you know Alistair? So I've known Alistair pretty much since the project started. Uh, I'm an ecologist by trade uh, and my specialisation is in reintroducing native species, species that are native to the UK or well, sometimes were native to the UK but we've since lost them. So I work with an organisation that helps bringing them back. So I've been advising Alistair with the Somerset Wildlands and also what role reintroductions can play in that. So is that then what rewilding is to you? Is it about reintroductions or is it something a little bit more than that? Rewilding really is a wider philosophy uh, about giving nature the driving seat, which may include reintroducing things early on uh, that weren't there before and are now missing. But on the whole, it's about letting nature take its course. It's about not having a set target. It's about just giving it free reign to do what it wants to do. In a world where biodiversity is collapsing down the drain in a rate that is pretty much unprecedented since the dinosaurs, Stuff like this is more important than ever. Pete, what makes this southern field different from the fields I was just at with Alistair? So the field you're just at, the grass is generally a bit shorter, you're going to have more flowers, things like that. That's generally good for butterflies that prefer those kinds of plants. Whereas over here, you're looking at lots of grasses, really thick stuff. Looks quite messy to us on the outside, but to wildlife, that is perfect. In the summer, it'll be filled with grasshoppers. There's lots of little small creatures, little small mammals that live beneath the grass and they'll find food from the birds as well, things like the barn owl and the kestrel, which you'll find around here. So over there, you've got a completely different array of animals compared to what's at the top field. Could you describe to me what this place would have looked like maybe a hundred or a thousand years ago then? Yeah, well, around here, the Somerset levels, the whole area would be completely underwater in the winter and even a bit in the spring as well. And we're talking thousands of years ago here. It really was just Britain's Okavango Delta. It was this huge, huge wetland with species you don't find nowadays, such as Dalmatian pelican, for example. You're also doing a reintroduction of harvest mice here. Are they not under threat because of all this flooding? Yeah, so we have reintroduced harvest mice here. In the winter time, they will get to higher ground, little patches here and there that are still dry. As soon as it dries up again, they'll all come right back into the area and recolonize very quickly. So they're very resilient animals. So is it possible we can just go and have a look, see where they live? Is there any chance that we might see one? Almost certainly won't see them, but you might find some nests. So let's have a look. So 
So when you're looking for harvest mouse nests at this time of year, you're looking for them in tussocks like this, tussocks of grass, where during the summer they have made their nests, uh, the breeding nests, and they abandon them come the end of the summer. But you can still find them in the winter sometimes. Just have a look in this one. Oh, oh, fantastic! You got a nest. Oh, cool. Just in there. Okay, let's have a look. Lovely. So what is it actually that we're looking at? This bit here, this grass here. That's right, about the size and shape of the cricket ball. And during summer, uh, one female will have maybe up to about six or eight babies in one of those nests. But she's not here now. She's not there now, no, so perfectly okay. So if you look at harvest mice as part of nature, they are a food base, so things like barn owls and kestrels will feed on them. Uh, even their nests can actually find homes for different insects as well. So there are lots of tiny little parts at play that we don't even know about and fall yet that having these animals back in place is a really important part of. So that is why we need a complete ecosystem as possible because we simply don't know otherwise. So Pete, thank you so much for showing me that field. I just have to ask you one last thing. Who can rewild? I think anybody can rewild because we're all a part of nature. We're all part of the same planet. And with the climate and ecological crisis we've got right now, we need everything we've got and rewilding is definitely one of the answers to that. Alistair, hi, how are we doing? Hi, how was Godney? Yeah, good. It was really interesting speaking to Pete, actually. So those fields at Godney, are they something that you're looking to expand upon? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've recently set up an organisation called Somerset Wildlands that's looking to bring a bit of a bit more wildness back into the area, sort of building up a network of wild stepping stones throughout the region, some large, some small. And each of those will be managed as lightly as we possibly can. You know, this is a fantastic area. It's a mixture of, you know, farmland, wet farmland, nature reserves. We're trying to acquire land for nature in two main ways. First of all, we're trying to buy land directly for the charities. We're trying to raise funds to buy parcels of land as they become available. But we're also trying to work with the community and um, building up a network of affiliated land owners in the area doing their own own stepping stones. So these may be small landowners who've got bits of land they'd like to rewild and aren't sure how to go about doing it, or people who want to just, you know, get together and buy small bits of land themselves. So you really create a community of interest around rewilding in this area, because this is something that can bring people together. Yeah, definitely. Bringing nature back into our lives really helps our mental well-being as well, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we all know we need nature. We all know that it makes us happy and brings joy to our lives, but we've lost so much in the last, you know, in the last decades, the last hundred years, and not just the species we've lost, of course, but just the sheer abundance of life that used to, you know, be, be part of our everyday existence. And bringing that back would, would you know, be so much joy, I think, and so it'd be so good for our society and our culture and our way of life. Because what we're doing here is absolutely not about trying to tell people what to do. We're not interested in running around telling people how to manage their land or talk to landowners or farmers. This is about people who want to be involved in this, in this kind of project, who like the idea of what we're doing, who like the idea of bringing a bit more wildness and nature back into our lives. And that's the people we're trying to work with. You know, this, this is a really positive project. It's about trying to build the community around rewilding and just make some space for nature. What can you say for other places in the world? Is it a similar idea, this idea of rewilding? Yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's similarities. I would never want to, to tell anyone else in the rest of the world, you know, how to do things and every part of the world will have its own solutions and, and issues. But one, one common factor, of course, is that we have a biodiversity crisis that is global. You know, we know that, that it's, it's a global issue. Wherever you are in the world, there's things we can do about that, whether it's protecting uh, the wildlife that's already there, that's still there, or whether it's about creating space for, you know, for nature to return. And I think, you know, that, that could involve supporting organisations or it could involve doing things within your own community or even just within your own home or garden if you have one. Um, so I think there's, there's, a, there's a lot we can all do together. It's been a fascinating few days here in the Somerset Levels meeting Pete and Alistair, two people at the forefront of the rewilding initiative. And if there's one point I've learned from them, it's that you can do rewilding whoever you are and wherever in the world you might be. It's not about tearing down cities or removing agriculture, it's just about bringing nature and wildlife back into the world that we have created. <laughs>